integrity of the system. But sure, I'll quickly review that. There's the cost to the voter, of course, right. uh, for all the for the idea itself and the underlying documents. Should they need to track those down? And those are the Ohio costs, and it varies. If you have somebody, a senior citizen, say, who was born in, in the South or in another state, you know, I can't even begin to imagine the difficulty that they would face uh, trying to track down those uh, documents. Uh, there have been some good studies out there about the cost of the state. Uh, we kind of averaged those together and uh, came up with a $7 million per year uh, over four years uh, to implement the provision. Uh, that has to do with the provision of free IDs, uh, the voter education uh, that's involved with implementing such a, a stringent requirement, uh, staff and poll worker training uh, involved, updating all the materials uh, that are uh, you know, widespread, that are distributed to voters, distributed to poll workers, uh, and then the possibility of uh, increased provisional ballots uh, because people are not able uh, to provide the ID that they need, uh, increasing the administrative burden on uh, boards of elections with uh, administering this more stringent requirement. The free IDs would be required to avoid it being poll tax? Right. The, the constitutional requirement, um, based on some of the case law out there, uh, is that a free ID uh, would be uh, required. Um, that's just the idea itself. So there, there would need to be a free ID provision. If that doesn't even address uh, the underlying documents issue, but that would cost the state significantly uh, to, to add that provision. In Franklin County, the, the voting machines that are in use, that most of you probably use, uh, are nearing the end of their shelf life. The county is going to have to try to find the money that it does not have invest in new polling machinery. That's true for many, many counties throughout the state. If we have excess money to spend, we should be trying to find as many state and federal resources as we can to help our counties have the most modern, up-to-date, reliable voting equipment possible. That'd be the best use. And Kathleen knows more about this uh, territory than I do, but uh, electronic poll books, for example, uh, those sorts of uh, things would be available to us if we had the resources uh, tracking we know from public opinion polls, the state mentioned public opinion polls, we know from public opinion polls that many people decline to participate in early absentee voting because they distrust government enough. They distrust whether their vote will actually get through the system, get to the board elections, and be counted. Well, when you order something from Amazon.com or I do, you can track you know, where your package is. Someday we can do that for absentee voting in this state. If someone requests an absentee ballot, fills it out and sends it in, a day or two later they can get online at the county board of elections and see that their envelope has been received, their ballot has been entered. Uh, what a marvelous way to improve and increase uh, voter confidence in the system. And, you know, can, and someday we'll get to that. Hopefully it's 10 years down the road, not 50 years down the road, if we have, if we have money to spend to improve our system. Photo ID is a waste of money. It's not a problem. So let's focus on things that are problems and improve the system so people have more confidence in their system. 